for the first time in history, a spacecraft has dared to enter the sun's atmosphere. This achievement of Parker Solar Probe will always be remembered in history, because neither any metal can tolerate so much heat, nor the hardest stone in the world. Then the question arises, that why the Parker Solar Probe does not melt in such intense heat? How is it able to survive such a hostile environment, where the temperatures are not in thousands but in millions of degrees? Today, we're going to explore the incredible technology that's keeping the Parker Solar Probe safe and operational. Welcome back guys, to Think Up. At the beginning of the 1900s, scientists noticed a strange phenomenon during research on the sun. They were estimating the temperature of the sun, from the wavelength and color of the light coming out of the sun. The researchers conducted this work from Earth, using a spectrograph, and it is worth noting that the color of light and its wavelength are directly related to its temperature. The result which came in front of the scientists, created a mystery that remains unexplained to this day. What they observed was that the temperature of the sun's surface is 5,500 degrees Celsius, whereas the temperature of its outermost atmospheric layer, the corona, is more than 500,000 degrees Celsius. That is 100 times more than the surface of the sun. It's like being away from a fire makes us feel hotter. This is a highly unusual phenomenon that scientists have been continuously trying to understand for the past 100 years. Normally, these layers are obscured by the sun's intense brightness and can only be observed during a solar eclipse or with the aid of a chronograph sunshade. After the establishment of NASA in 1958, many space missions began. Satellites and spacecraft were launched one by one into space for the first time. However, to understand this unique phenomenon of the sun, it was necessary to construct a probe that could enter the corona layer and investigate what was occurring there, as well as study the rays emanating from the sun. Even in temperatures exceeding 500,000 degrees Celsius, obviously, this task was not easy due to the extreme heat, making it a challenging endeavor. Iron has a melting temperature of 1,500 degrees Celsius, while tungsten, which is the hardest metal in the world, has a melting temperature of 3,422 degrees Celsius. This means that the surface of the sun can melt both these metals within an instant. Now imagine what would happen in the corona layer where the temperature is millions of degrees Celsius. The design and development of the Parker Solar Probe presented a significant challenge, but an even greater obstacle was getting it close enough to the sun. Because the gravitational pull of the sun holds the planets of our solar system in orbit, making it difficult to approach. It's important to understand that if a satellite needs to be removed from Earth's orbit and brought back to Earth, its speed must be decreased so that Earth's gravity can overpower it and attract it back. Conversely, if the satellite is intended to be sent to another planet, its speed must be increased so that it can break free from Earth's gravitational pull and enter a new orbit. Let's say a spacecraft is being sent to Mars. It first needs to be launched into Earth's orbit using rockets, and then it must be precisely maneuvered to escape Earth's gravitational pull at the right time, angle, and speed. Extracting a spacecraft from Earth's orbit is a highly energy-intensive task. The craft is initially launched into Earth's orbit using rockets, but once there, there are no more rockets available. Instead, small rockets fitted within the spacecraft are used to gradually maneuver it out of orbit. Launching a spacecraft towards Mars doesn't require a large launch angle, since Mars is relatively close to Earth. However, sending a spacecraft towards the Sun from Earth requires a much larger launch angle due to the vast distance of 150 million kilometers. This also requires a tremendous amount of energy and no rocket with such power has been developed yet. NASA's experts team decided to send the Parker probe to Venus before its journey towards the Sun. Being the second planet in our solar system, Venus could be used to increase the probe's speed by utilizing its gravity. But there was a challenge. Venus is a smaller planet, meaning its gravity is weaker. In order to achieve the necessary speed to approach the Sun, 
the Parker probe had to complete 24 orbits around Venus, only then would it be able to reach its closest point to the Sun. On August 12, 2018, the Parker Solar Probe launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. NASA has planned a time frame of eight years for this mission. Venus will be used 24 times to reach the closest point to the Sun. There are 37 hours in each rotation, on which there is a chance to do research on the Sun. Means in total eight years, this probe will be able to do 900 hours of research on the Sun. On April 28, 2021, NASA confirmed that the Parker probe had successfully entered the Sun's corona layer during its eighth orbit. Mysteriously the corona being 100 times hotter than the surface of the Sun, was indeed a fact, which was also verified by the Parker probe. But why is it so? And what is this force that is mysteriously heating the corona layer more than the surface of the Sun, are still being studied by researchers? Now let us turn to our main question, why did the Parker Solar Probe not melt in such extreme heat? The side of the probe facing the Sun, is equipped with a specially designed heat shield made of carbon foam. This is not normal foam, but it is specially designed by Ultramet Company, to absorb the heat of the Sun. This foam is 97% empty from the inside, which makes the heat shield even more effective. In addition, a layer of carbon-carbon composite has also been applied on both sides of the heat shield, which is made of graphite and resin. This composite material was then superheated to turn into the purest form of carbon, and as we know, carbon has very high heat conductivity. And finally, the side of the heat shield that faces the sun is coated with white ceramic, so that most of the sunlight gets reflected before entering inside. Apart from the heat shield, the rest of the Parker Solar Probe is designed to be in the shield's shadow at all times. Despite all these measures, the Parker Probe can withstand a maximum temperature of 2,500 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of the corona is 500,000 degrees Celsius. However, the reason for the probe's ability to tolerate such extreme heat is also easy to understand. According to the law of thermodynamics, a medium is necessary for the transfer of heat. For example, during summers, particles and vapors present on Earth carry heat inside them, which making us feel hot even at night. If the number of particles is low, the heat won't be able to transfer easily. For example, if you put your hand in boiling water, it will burn immediately. Whereas if you put your hand in a 300 degree oven and take it out immediately, you may not feel any heat. This is possible only because the water molecules come in direct contact with our skin, whereas in the oven, there is no direct contact. Experts say that Parker Solar Probe's heat shield has a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of its backside, where sunlight does not reach is in minus because it does not have particles that can transfer heat. This is the reason why the Parker Solar Probe is not melting even after being so close to the sun. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and I'll meet you in the next amazing video.